<clears throat> okay, today our essential question is how does the particle or kinetic theory of matter apply? Our learning target for this section of notes is target six. Explain how energy is transferred through matter can change the state of matter. Okay, so The particle or kinetic theory of matter, um, we've heard of this theory before. It, um, matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms that are in constant motion, so they always have kinetic energy. Atoms are attracted to each other, atoms have empty space between them, and if you increase the kinetic energy of matter, matter will change state. Okay, so let's take a look at um, what that theory means. So if you look at this picture right here, okay, these are phases of water. The little purple dots represent the atoms or particles in matter. Right here we've got some uh, thermal energy. So when we apply thermal energy to the matter, that's going to transfer kinetic energy to those molecules. So we're going to play this. You start increasing the temperature, increasing the thermal energy, it's increasing the kinetic energy of water. So the more kinetic energy you add, you add it's going to cause matter to change state. The water is now changing from a solid to a liquid, and we even have some particles of water that are changing to a gas. Notice when we reach 100 degrees Celsius, that's the boiling point of water, you start seeing all those liquids start escaping into gas. So again, the more kinetic energy that we add to matter, then you will have a change in state. I'm going to go all the way. Okay, this is our picture of what atoms look like in each state of matter. If you look at the solid, the atoms are packed tightly together. Liquids are a little bit farther apart and gases are even farther apart. Okay, so when we talk about the particle theory, we're going to start talking a little bit about how we classify matter. Um, pure substances is matter that cannot be broken down by physical means. So those are your elements and your compounds. Remember, elements are made up of one type of atom determined by the number of protons, the positive charge, also known as the atomic number. So we did this in sixth grade when we looked at the periodic table, and that top number on the periodic table that represents above the element, that represents the atomic number, that tells you the number of protons each atom has. And remember, every element has a different number of protons, and that's what defines the element. Also remember that protons must equal your electrons. In order for an atom to be stable, the positive charges have to equal the negative charges. And since all elements have different number of protons, they also have unique properties. Compounds are made up of two or more elements that have been chem chemically combined, and they have new properties from the original elements. So those are, two, those are our two examples of pure substances. Now, just to review, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. We saw that in the little animation on the phase changes of water. The more kinetic energy matter has, then that's going to cause matter to change state. Change state. Thermal energy is the amount of kinetic energy that um, atoms have. So thermal energy is just talking about the amount. And remember, energy can cause a change in matter, just like we saw phases, the phase changes. Water will change state when energy is transferred to that matter. It will ch cause, uh, cause it to change from a solid to a liquid, liquid to a gas. Okay, so let's start talking about specifically matter in its solid, liquid, and gas form. A solid has shape and volume. And that's simply because what we saw in the picture up here, solids, are the atoms are packed tightly together, so they have shape. And because they have shape, they're going to take up space, and we're going to be able to measure that volume.
They also have what's called vibrational movement. And I'm going to show you an animation of that in just, uh, just a minute. And they have the least amount of kinetic energy. The atoms do not move very quickly, and they saw it. So they have the least amount of kinetic energy. A liquid has volume but has no shape. A liquid will take the shape of its container. It has flow, and it has surface tension and viscosity. So those are two new words we might we haven't heard before. Viscosity is a liquid's ability to resist flowing. So some liquids do not flow very fast, like maple syrup is extremely slow flowing liquid. So it has what's called a high viscosity. Oil will flow really quickly. So it has a very low viscosity. It does not resist flow at all. This picture over here is showing you um, viscosity. It's showing you different liquids. Okay, so the different liquids, the ones that are flowing very quickly um, and so forth, it's going slower and slower from each test tube. So those liquids all have different viscosities. Now, surface tension is something that's pretty unique to the compound of water. Okay, surface tension is um, a very particular pro a property of water and it's pretty neat. What you see here, these are your water molecules. They look like Mickey Mouse. The red is the oxygen and the white is the two hydrogen for H2O. And if you look, the water molecules, there are, even though this picture doesn't show it that well, but these, there are some spaces in between each individual water molecule. Those spaces, if they are not uh, broken, can hold very small mass objects like a paper clip. A paper clip can be sat on water because a paper clip has very small mass, so it won't break through the spaces between the water molecules. If it breaks through those spaces between the water molecules, it's going to start to sink. So that's what surface tension is. A gas has the most kinetic energy out of all the phases of matter. It doesn't have any particular shape because the atoms in a gas move around very quickly, so they don't take a certain definite shape unless you put the gas in a container. They also have no volume because they're moving around so fast. So let's take a look at what the atoms look like in each phase of matter. If you take a look at the microscopic view of a solid, they're moving very slightly. Okay, that's the vibrational movement that I was talking to you about. Over here in the middle, we've got the microscopic view of a liquid. They're moving around a lot faster than a solid, so they have more kinetic energy than a solid. That's why liquids can flow. And then the last view is of a gas. It's moving around super fast, so it has the most kinetic energy. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is this little animation that just looks, uh, shows you um, what the particles and atoms look like up close when we change state. So here's our solid, okay? There's the vibrational movement, so another view of what the atoms look like. A liquid, we're gonna add kinetic energy, that solid's gotta melt. Has flow, the particles are moving around. Okay, they're close together, but um, they're able to move. And that last, a gas, we have to add more kinetic energy to cause the liquid to boil, and it has really nice sound effects. I mean, you, as you can tell, the atoms in a gas are moving around very fast. There's large spaces between the different um, gas molecules. So let's talk about the changes of state. The only way that a change in matter can change state is if energy is transferred through that matter. So um, we're just going to quickly review the different changes in state that matter can undergo. Evaporation, remember, is a liquid going to a gas. Energy is increasing because we're going from liquid, which has less kinetic energy, to a gas that has more. So there is more energy being transferred to that matter. Condensation is the reverse, a gas to a liquid. So energy is decreasing. We're take, actually, energy is being transferred away from that matter to cause it to go from a gas to liquid. Melting is a solid to a liquid. Energy increases. Freezing is a liquid to a solid, and energy also decreases. So this gives you a visual of the different phase changes 
Um, again, we always use water. It's one of the easiest ones to, to show. When the energy is released or transferred away from the matter, that's when we have our condensation going from a gas to a liquid, liquid to a solid, which is freezing. When energy is being transferred to matter, then we have melting, solid to a liquid, evaporation, liquid to gas. Okay, to show the phase changes in an animation, uh, this is also a link on my website because there's questions and a little quiz you can take if you want to go through that and do that. What I'd like you to do is make sure when you're watching the increase in heat and the change in state, I want you to take a look at this graph down below. So if we start increasing heat, the temperature, okay, then notice how the molecules get more energy. They're going to start to go from a solid to a liquid, so they're going to start to, um, to melt. Now, notice not all of those particles melt at the same pace. So if you notice on this line, this means temperature is increasing up until this straight line across is showing you the time it takes for those solid particles to completely get enough kinetic energy to change to a liquid. Now again, watch as we start increasing the temperature. The line starts to go back up because it's showing an increase in temperature. It'll keep increasing until it's going to start to flatten out here. This is showing the time that it takes for those liquid uh, all the liquid water molecules to change into a gas. It doesn't automatically happen. Okay, and you guys know, so if you leave a glass of water out, it doesn't automatically evaporate. It takes time for all that liquid to evaporate. So that's what this straight line represents, the time it takes for the liquid to evaporate. And you can see that's what happens, that straight line. Okay, and if you want to go to the website to kind of do a quick review, you can click on this link, and there's questions you can ask yourself and make sure you understand it. One last uh, phase change that um, we don't mention a whole lot is sublimation. That's when a solid goes directly to a gas phase. It skips the liquid phase. Again, energy is increased when this happens. An example of that is dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide. When it's exposed to room temperature, it skips the liquid phase and goes directly to a gas. Okay. One of the last things we're going to talk about is how temperature, heat are going to um, affect matter. So temperature is basically how we measure kinetic energy. So when you read the temperature and you look outside and you say, oh, it's going to be um, 75 degrees Fahrenheit today, and that sounds really nice, that is basically the measurement of the amount of kinetic energy the air molecules have. So temperature is just telling you the amount of kinetic energy the atoms have. So when we look at water and we're boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius, that is letting you know that that's a lot of kinetic energy. Heat is different. Heat is the movement of thermal energy from high to low. So when heat flows um, from high temperature to low temperature, that's, that's called heat. So we see that if you go to a restaurant and let's say you and uh, your friend or order some drinks and you order a hot chocolate and your friend orders a cold soda. If you leave the two drinks out on the table, eventually they're both going to go to room temperature. That's because the heat from the hot chocolate will actually flow to the area where there's less kinetic energy and it'll go to your soda until they reach room temperature. So heat always flows from an area of high temperature to low temperature. This is one of the reasons why we have weather, and we're going to do, we're going to have that unit in, um, uh, later on this year, and we'll get to come back to that. Now, when you apply uh, thermal energy to matter, and you start increasing the kinetic energy, we uh, start seeing something happen called thermal expansion. Basically, when matter's thermal energy increases, matter will expand and get bigger. When thermal energy decreases, matter contracts. So for example, if you heat up a balloon, the balloon's going to get bigger because the gas inside the balloon has more kinetic energy, it's going to spread out. In the same respect, if you uh, take away kinetic energy, then the gas molecules are going to come closer together in that balloon and they're going to contract or shrink. Here's another example of thermal expansion. High temperature particles move and take up more space. You can see that with the scale. 
low temperature particles move less and take up less space. Okay, that concludes our notes on physical properties of matter.